making sure, you know, safety, safety. Um, we're assisting with self-care measures, indicator safety, kind of jumped ahead of my little slides there, um, and then counseling as well. So promoting nutrition, so general recommendations, um, about 16 for, um, and then with the issue of planning and breastfeeding, making sure we're telling her what they're doing. Definitely lots and lots of water. Um, not just only water intoxication, but um, good diet. Um, and then supporting her choice um, of newborn feeding. Um, if she's planning on breastfeeding, um, and if she is planning to bottle feed or supplements, that's okay too. Um, we just made sure we're assisting with her. Ensuring safety during ambulation. So the first time she gets up um, to ambulate, whether it's after vaginal delivery or a C-section, we want to make sure we do our full assessment. What is her blood pressure? Having her dangle when she first gets up. Just like you learned in fundamentals, making sure just is she lightheaded? Um, anything changes? Um, to elevate the head of the bed, just kind of helping with that um, stabilization. Um, make sure when she stands up that we stay with her, um, walking with her. Maybe she's asking where this is going. Um, definitely frequently asking, is she lightheaded? Is she feeling dizzy? Is she feeling weird? Um, and make sure we stay close to her. Um, for breast care, um, we talked about today the breast assessment and how we can help with um, engorgement if she's breastfeeding. Um, helping with, with that, making sure they know the switch size. So if she Fed last on the left side, the next time she um, nurses, she'll start on the right side. Um, maybe she's needing to use a pump, so assisting um, with setting up the breast pump, um, things like that. So the next point, bullet point, women who should not breastfeed. Is there anybody who shouldn't breastfeed? HIV positive. HIV positive. Mm -hmm. Good job. And we talked yesterday about breast care, so she's breastfeeding. Um, using just no soap. Um, maybe some lanolin to help to keep the nipples contracting. Because again, if it's painful, she's not going to want to continue. Um, she's going to like things that could hurt. Um, and then if she's bottle feeding, we talked about how to suppress lactation. Are there any other situations where women can breastfeed that you know of? This is just that I think of as um, <laughs> HIV positive. So not that they, they can't breastfeed, but I know that um, some women that have like very specific implants, it's extremely difficult and painful for them to breastfeed, so that a lot of them end up not. The newer, I don't know the newer breast implants are more facilitating to breastfeeding. But yeah, there are some older ones um, that may not. How about the hogs? They get too much attention. Not often. <laughs> <laughs> what about um, herpes simplex virus? Could they still breast? Oh, which one? Herpes simplex. Or herpes. I don't know. I, I guess know. if there's active lesions on the breast, which I don't know that I've noted that, mm -hmm. but I can't say that that would, that I can think of, um, be a, a, a negative. So. All right. So postpartum blues. We thought we watched the video. Hopefully, didn't like totally scar anybody. <laughs> All right, so we talked about that one yesterday. Just being very familiar with that. All right, so as we get ready for discharge, so making sure uh, we're assessing, um, getting that they've met the criteria depending on um, the facility. At Memorial, they have to watch a um, shaken baby video before they can go home. It's very, it can be very disturbing. Um, but it's required that even if it's their sixth child, they have to watch the shaken baby video before going home. Um, car seat trial. Um, all the kids have to make sure they put them in their car seat. Parents bring their car seat in. So put the kiddo um, in the car seat of the nursery with the pulse off to make sure that they're able to maintain their um, oxygen saturation before going home. Especially if they're going a long distance, um, they'll typically keep them in the car seat as close to the length of time that they're going to be in that car seat to make sure that they can um, maintain that O2 sap. There's been times, especially our kind of more preemie kiddos, that don't have the muscle strength because their heads will flop and occlude their airway. And so in these car seat trials, 
they could, if they are able to maintain their O2s at a normal car seat, they'll have um, you know, the more the bassinet type car seat that they can lay more flat, and they'll more be able to maintain their, their airway in that length of time. So just okay. things that we'll make sure they can do before we send them home. Those are super handy because it's just like a little box that's like yeah. a car seat. Might need some good ones. Yeah, just because it, just even sitting up a little bit more is too much for the little head to, to stay up. Um, the immunizations we talked about, you know, their um, rubella, their tetanus, so we're making sure all of those are caught up before we send them home. One of the things you might notice that they'll do, the nurses will do, is they'll have all of their discharge stuff ready to go, their last set of vitals is done, then they give them their immunizations. Because if you give them the immunizations too far early before discharge, before doing that last set of vitals, what happens with some of those live vaccines to our body? <laughs> the temperature elevates. A natural response to the vaccine is a temperature elevation. Well, a temperature elevation is caused for canceling the discharge. Because is it an infection or was it the vaccine? And so we try to make sure that we don't have that mix up, that we've done the last set of vitals, they were fine, she was in febrile, give her her vaccine, and then we let her go home. Because we don't want her to have to stay another day just because it was a natural reaction. The infant already had the vaccine as well, haven't they? Right, so the infant had, and the delivery room, we've done the Hep B, the vitamin K, and the um, little vial. Yeah. And we do those within, within about an hour, a couple hours after birth, we give those. If they're, they're being okay. And then follow-up care. Um, some facilities have the telephone follow-up and the, the warm line. Um, outpatient follow-up, um, and then home visits possibly. If you have any um, nurse-family partnership um, with nurses, you know, establishing that relationship and doing, just make sure, especially on new moms, um, how are things going? You're doing okay um, at that point. And then some of the challenges. So just kind of looking at what are some of the, the challenges, challenges they may face. Um, Definitely things that we see now with the shortened hospital stays, they come in, they deliver, they go home. Um, and so we, we really have to be on our game with our teaching, um, making sure they understand that. All right. You guys ready for a break? No, there's nothing in there. No, no, there's nothing in there. It's trash. All right, we come back at 9.30 and we'll jump into something more equally fun. More equally fun. More equally fun. <laughs> hey, I wasn't an English major. <laughs> As evidence by. <laughs> You're a nurse. All right. Yep. She's having that thought.